Hi, it's Becky with the Dorky Thrifters. So here's my number two video in the catch-up series, what, what sold on eBay for the month of March 2018. This video features 40 items, five of which are from Poshmark, because I just recently started selling on Poshmark in March, the end of March, and then I've got one lone bonanza sale to show you. I know, bonanza's not great, but I can't complain about a $150 sale. So as promised, here comes my catch-up video number two of eBay sales. So this is going to be um, my best sales from March 2018. Okay, actually let me start by just quickly showing you my spreadsheet. And these are the 40 sales that I'm going to show you. And then the rest of my sales are here. I couldn't get it all in one. So there's part of them. There's part of them. But I'm just going to basically go over the, um, the things here at the top. So there's 40 sales. Um, my profit on these 40 sales was $1,311. My PayPal fees were $64.38. Um, these were, this was going to be like Poshmark and Bonanza sales, or I mean fees, so $32.80. And my eBay ad fees, because I did start doing promoted listings, I had $13.49 in eBay ad fees that month for these listings anyways. Okay, so my eBay fees for these listings was $148, give or take. My shipping and handling supplies, I estimated to be approximately $46. My shipping and handling label costs, so this is what the labels actually cost me, was $263.97. What I collected was $358.10 minus PayPal and eBay fees, which was $43.19. So my actual shipping collected was 314 minus what my shipping and handling supplies cost based on this right here. Estimated shipping and handling supplies is 20% of my label cost. So that covers basically boxes and bubble wrap and tissue paper and ink for my printer and paper and tape and all those things. Um, I just take a percentage of my label costs. So. I don't know. It's not exact science, but it kind of gives me an idea. So based on that, I came out a little bit ahead on my um, shipping, if that makes any sense at all. So that's how I, I like to be able to, to see. I like to keep this number like really low, within like $20 positive or negative every month. That way I know that I'm not charging too much for shipping, but on the same time I'm not charging too little for shipping either. All right, so here we are back at eBay, and I'm going to show you the items that I sold. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. So this is a pair of vintage Cerruti or Cerruti eyeglasses. Um, these came out of an eBay lot that I purchased. I estimated that I paid about $1.26 per pair out of that lot. So I had these listed for $50, but I took a best offer of $34.28. So my profit after eBay fees and PayPal fees and shipping and all that was approximately $28.28. All right, moving on. Here's a pair of Aristar eyeglasses. So these are prescription sunglasses, but they could also be used for eyeglasses. Okay, so these I also took a best offer for $25, and they were shipped to Canada. So I did make a little tiny bit extra on shipping as well. So my profit after everything was $24.51. Okay, this is a game I found at a thrift store. I paid $3 for this. I always look through the games and I just find things that are kind of unusual that I, I don't know, vintage things and stuff. But this was one I picked up. It's called Bezer Wizard. It sold for $30 fairly quickly. And so my profit on that was $19.46. So it was just a board game, trivia game. All right, this is a little Yardro figurine I found at a thrift store for $2. 
it was yard drill. You can see that anyway. Um, she was in perfect condition, didn't have any chips or cracks or grazing or anything like that. Super cute little girl. And I sold her for $20 plus shipping, and my profit was $15.10. This is a blown glass ashtray. So I don't know. I found it at a thrift store. It was a dollar, so I just grabbed it because I thought it was kind of unusual. Um, I actually had it for a while, but it was kind of cool. It finally sold for $20.95 plus shipping, leaving my profit at $17.66. Okay, in my last video I talked about faucet sets a little bit, and I do like to pick up faucet sets. This particular set I picked up wasn't complete. The box was there, the instructions were there, everything, but it was missing a few pieces, so I just decided to sell it individual pieces. And so this piece here sold for $20 plus shipping, and so my profit ended up being $15.40. Okay, and here is a pair of Luxottica eyeglasses. These I paid $2 for at the thrift store, and I had a case to go with them. I took an offer of $25. After everything, my profit was $20.38. Alright, here is an old Star Wars VHS. This was still in the shrink wrap. This is the old original theatr theatrical cut. So I paid a dollar for this, and it sold very quickly for $20 plus shipping. So my profit was $16.02. Here's a pair of Ellen Tracy eyeglasses. I paid $1.50 for these at a thrift store. They sold for $26.95 plus shipping. So my profit was $22.48. Here is a vintage Gideon Bible. Now I don't buy Gideon Bibles very often unless they're really old ones. And then I definitely do buy them because they sell for a lot of money. So there are collectors of these Gideon Bibles. So definitely keep your eye open for these older Gideon Bibles. There's websites out there that you can do research on because they're not really dated. And so I did some research and discovered like based on where it was made and different things like that, um, that it was from the 40s or the 50s. That's, that's the best I could um, narrow it down. So I put that it was from the 40s or 50s, exact year unknown. Um, and this was a very rare, I didn't, I couldn't find any others like this anywhere online. This one I paid $2 for at the thrift store. It sold for $50. I shipped it to Ireland, so I made a few dollars on shipping. And my profit was $46.21 on that Bible. Here is a pair of caterpillar eyeglasses. I didn't know they made caterpillar eyeglasses, but apparently they do. Learn something new every day. There you go, caterpillar. So these I paid $2.50 for at a thrift store. You can also see the logo there, cat. They sold for $20 plus shipping, so my profit was $15.29 on those. Okay, so this is a 1976 Tolkien puzzle, which was a, a poem, Bilbo's last song, and I paid two dollars for this at a thrift store. I did count the pieces, and let me see. So I counted 525 pieces, but it didn't say how many pieces were there were supposed to be on the box anywhere, and so I wasn't really sure, so I just put that I had counted the pieces and there were 525. It sold for $23.95 plus shipping, so my profit was $18.76. Unfortunately, the person did email me afterwards, after they received it, and told me that it was missing one piece. So that was unfortunate, but they were okay with it. They said, you know what, I'll just draw something or make it work. So they were really sweet about it. Um, but that was really unfortunate that it was missing a piece. I feel bad about that. Anyways. Let's move on. This is a pair of Ray-Ban eyeglasses. These I found at a thrift store for $2. These are authentic Ray-Bans. There are different ways you can tell authentic Ray-Bans. I'm going to have to do a video on this one time because I just, I don't want to get into it right now, but I've been asked a lot of times if I find a lot of fake eyeglasses, and I really don't. Most eyeglasses, I don't worry too much about being fake unless they are a name brand like Ray-Ban Oakley or some of the you know really higher end eyeglasses those I really don't I really check closely but for the most part I don't think they're counterfeit very often 
Now, because I've dealt with eyeglasses for so long and so many hundreds of eyeglasses, I can usually tell just by like looking at them and feeling them if they're authentic or not. Um, usually, you could just look at like the hinges. And if they're plastic cheap hinges, no, they're not real. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a dead giveaway. No, I don't find very many fakes unless they are Ray-Ban or Oakley. I definitely find fakes of those. And I know there was another brand I was going to mention. I can't, oh, I remember what it was now. Maui Jim. I have found a few Maui Jim fakes. So be careful with that brand as well. But other than that, I really don't think that it's a problem with eyeglasses. So these I took a best off for $50. So my profit was $42.21. And this is a pair of Nikon eyeglasses. I paid $2.50 for these. These are the rimless eyeglasses, which are almost always a good eyeglass to buy, no matter what brand they are, because they're very expensive. There you can see the Nikon logo there. So these did sell for $40 plus shipping, so my profit was $27.73. And here is a pair of Michael Kors eyeglasses. These I paid $3 for at the Goodwill. I thought these were really nice. These sold really fast. Actually, I think I only had these for a couple days once I listed them. They're really neat. And I had a case to go with them and a little cloth also. Michael Kors there. So I said I paid $3 for these at the Goodwill. I sold them for $54.95, so my profit was $45.56. Here's a pair of Oakley eyeglasses. These are prescription eyeglasses. So these I paid $2 for at the thrift store. Um, they sold for $40 plus shipping, so my profit was $33.69. Okay, this is a pair of Adidas eyeglasses. I have sold several pairs of Adidas eyeglasses also. They're a really good brand to pick up if you find them. Let's see, there you can see the little logo there on the temple, on the ear sock again. So these I paid $3 for at the Goodwill, and they sold for $50 plus shipping, so my profit was $41.25. Okay, so Alfred Sung eyeglasses, I paid $3 for these in an eBay lot. They sold for $30, but there you go, it says Pure by Alfred, Alfred Sung. So they sold for $30 plus shipping, so my profit was $23.74. This is a pair of Randolph Engineering eyeglasses. I have sold several of this brand as well. I paid $3 for these at a thrift store, and they sold for $27.95. So my profit was $21.91 on those. So speaking of Maui Jim, here's a pair of Maui Jim sunglasses that I found. These I paid a dollar for. They had some damage, so these are not prescription eyeglasses, just regular sunglasses, but one of the lenses was chipped. You can see that right there. Had a nice big chip out of it, which is why I sold them for only $50. They would have been worth a lot more had they not had that chip, but I sold them for $50 and my profit was $43.09. All right, here is a Ellen Tracy pouch. And so I wanted to talk about this one real quick. I didn't sell it for a whole lot. I sold it for $14.95. But if you ever see these little Ellen Tracy triangular pouches, definitely grab them because um, they sell really fast. This is kind of a sought after vintage pouch. I guess they don't make them anymore like this. And um, yeah. I actually posted this, it sold the same day that I posted it, and then I had somebody even email me after that, message me on eBay and ask me if I had any more, if it was still available. Um, so they're definitely, if you see them, grab them, they will sell. So that one sold for $14.95, my profit was $12.32. I probably could have sold it for more if I knew how popular it was. Now I know. So here's a Hermes silk tie that I found at the Goodwill for $2. That's what they look like. Um, of course, always pick up Hermes if you find them. So I paid $2 for this at the Goodwill. It sold for $50 within a couple days, and my profit was $42.72. No, wait, $42.17, sorry. Okay, so here is a set of 12 drawer pulls. They had the back plates. 
Let's see, so I paid $12 for 12 of these, so a dollar each, and they sold for $30. I took a best offer of $30 on these, so my profit was $13.50. This is kind of a weird sale, but I found a, at the Goodwill, there was just a huge bag of these, and they were brand new in their individual packages. They had like the little, they're these little kangaroo Joey pump sets, and I think it's for, oh, I forget what it was for. It's like a feeding tube, basically. And I think people use these if, for medical reasons. Anyways, I found a big bag full of them. There was more than 70 of them. I think I counted 75 for $15 for all of them. Um, I listed them kind of low because it was actually a, a lot. Like they were, they're kind of big and they took up a lot of space. So I listed them for $65. So I probably could have sold them for more, but I just wanted to get rid of them as fast as possible. So my profit was still $38.59, which is a great profit to me. I'll take it. All right, here is a pair of Vera Bradley sunglasses. These are prescription sunglasses. They had prescription lenses in them. So I took a best offer of, on these for $18. I paid $2 for them at the Goodwill. My profit was $14.23. So don't shy away from the prescription sunglasses either. They're always, not always, but certain brands are, are good sellers. And you don't really have to worry if the lenses are scratched or not because they're just going to have to be replaced anyways. And here's another pair of Ray-Ban eyeglasses. Um, these I got in an eBay lot. I paid about $5 for them. They sold for $64.95 plus shipping, so my profit was $48.47. Unfortunately, though, on this pair of eyeglasses, they actually got lost in the mail. They were delivered to the wrong house, I guess. The lady was actually really nice about it. She emailed me. She said, hey, the tracking says that they've been delivered, but I didn't receive them. Sometimes things get delivered to the wrong house. Is there anything you can do? So I just told her to... Um, to open a case that she hadn't received them and then I uploaded the tracking showing that they had been delivered and eBay actually refunded her money but didn't charge me for it so it was a win-win eBay paid for this so that was that worked out in my favor um, doesn't always happen like that but this particular sale did so unfortunately the buyer didn't get their eyeglasses but nobody lost any money it was too bad, too, because these were really cool. They were kind of a almost like a silicone, rubbery feel to them, like real soft. They were really neat eyeglasses. Okay, so here is a set of V8 Magnum emblems. I have a huge box of these things that my husband, I don't know, he collected them or something. I don't know why, but we just have, and when I went to clean out my storage unit, I found even more. And so I've just been listing them little by little. And so these, I don't know what I paid for if anything, so I just put zero. They sold for $20, so my profit was $16.65. And um, I sell these things a lot, actually. I don't sell them for very much, so I don't show them very often on my videos, but you know, they sell for five, 10, $15, lots of times more, depending on what they are. So This is a silhouette case. I know I've talked about these cases before. If you see these cases, grab them, don't hesitate. They always sell for me. This one here sold for $22.95 plus shipping. It was just a case. I found it at the Goodwill for a dollar, so my profit was $19.74. All right, here's another Bible. Um, this was a, see, I don't think I knew the year on this one. Didn't have a year. But it was a vintage Bible um, from Oxford University Press. I paid $2 for it. Sold it for twenty four ninety five, so my profit was twenty four oh four. It must have been shipped to another country, which is why my profit was so close to what it sold for. I didn't write it down, but anyways. Okay, so here is a pair of headrests from a Ford F one fifty. I paid five dollars for these. These were the front headrests, so I paid five dollars for those at the Goodwill. They sold for fifty-four ninety-five plus shipping, so my profit was thirty-seven sixty-eight. Now, if you find auto parts like this and you don't know what they go to, open them up and pull out the little tag and look up these numbers. So you see these numbers here. Look up these part numbers, and you'll you'll be able to figure it out. 
Okay, so here is a pair of Puma sunglasses. These I paid $3 for, including the case at a thrift store. And these are just regular sunglasses, non-prescription. Nice lenses. They sold for $40 plus shipping. So my profit was $32.30. So here's something that's kind of interesting. I had never seen these before, but they were in a bag at the Goodwill. I paid $2.50 for the whole bag. What they are are they these little clips, and they're just little short, like maybe 30-second clips of songs. And then there's these little players. And both the players worked really nice. So anyways, um, yeah, I'd never seen them before, but I went ahead and just looked them up. So I paid $2.50 for that whole lot. They sold for $60. And they sold pretty quick. I think they sold within a couple weeks. I didn't have them very long. So my profit was $49.94. All right, here is a blender. So I found two of these Warring Extreme Blender. So these are like commercial bar blenders, like real industrial strength. These things weighed a lot. I paid $16.50 each for these at the Goodwill. This one here sold for $195 or $199.95 plus shipping. So my profit was $150.74 on this one. I think the other one sold for $150. And then I sold just a lid by itself for $20. And then I sold, definitely made some good money on these blenders. And then just for fun, here's another one of those Eastern Press books that I was talking about in my last video. Um, this is the Analects of Confucius. And it sold for $20. I paid $4 for it. So my profit was $14. Okay, so I had one Bonanza sale that I wanted to talk about. This is a pair of Serengeti sunglasses. These are not prescription either. These are just regular sunglasses. They were in beautiful condition. The lenses were really nice. No scratches. So I paid $2 for them. They sold for $173.20 on Bonanza. Like I've said before, and like I said in my last video, I don't make very many Bonanza sales. Now, I have over 700 things listed on eBay, which are also listed on Bonanza, and I am lucky if I make three sales a, a month on Bonanza. So I don't make a lot of sales on Bonanza, but it is pretty brainless because it's all automated once you set it up. They automatically import your eBay listings. If something sells on Bonanza, they end it for you on eBay and vice versa. There's really no extra work to it. And every once in a while I make a sale. So, you know, it took a little bit of time just to set it up and get everything going. And then after that, I just, I really haven't messed with it at all much. So I do have a video talking about Bonanza and I'll link to it in the description below. If you're interested in getting started with Bonanza, you can use my link as a referral and I think you get some extra points. Bonanza has like a point system and I talk about it in my video. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. So I just recently started selling on Poshmark in March of this year. So two months ago, approximately. So I've already made 15 sales and become a Posh ambassador. So it's going pretty well for me. Um, I only have about, I think, I don't know, maybe a hundred and 20, 130 items actively listed on Poshmark right now. So I need to get more things listed. I've basically just been cross posting from eBay over to Poshmark a few every day. So let me just go through real quick the sales that I've made in the last, or the sales that I made in March. So I made five sales in March. So this was the first thing I sold on Poshmark. It's a pair of Kate Spade prescription eyeglasses. They're really cool. They sold for $40. Now the way Poshmark works, if you're not familiar, it you list your prices and then people can always make you offers and then you can always counter. So I think I had these listed for 100, I had them listed for 50. What this price right here, 150, is you can put what the price was new and then what your price is basically. So I put that the price was new, 150. I'm not sure exactly, I was just kind of guessing. It doesn't really matter. And then I put my price as $50. Somebody made me an offer of $40. Poshmark does take 20%, but 
but you don't have to worry about shipping, um, charging shipping or paying for shipping because Poshmark just charges the buyer for shipping. Everything is just priority mail and they send you the label and you just print out the label and, and mail it priority mail. After my cost on these glasses, which was $3 and Poshmark, Poshmark's fee, I made $29 on this pair of glasses. This is a pair of coach eyeglasses I sold on Poshmark. Um, same thing, I had them listed I think probably $30, $35. Somebody made me an offer and I accepted $25. So my profit was $13.90 on those. Here's another pair of Kate Spade sunglasses. These were not RX eyeglasses, they were just regular sunglasses that I found at the thrift store. I paid $8 for these including the case. Um, I took an offer of $40 for those, so my profit was $24. And then here's a pair of Yves St. Laurent vintage sunglass frames. They don't have any lenses in them, they're just the plastic frames. Um, I paid $2 for these at a thrift store, took an offer of $30 on those, so my profit was $22. And then the last pair that I'm going to show you today is this pair of Morel, and I paid four dollars for these at the Goodwill. I took an offer of twenty-nine dollars on these, so my profit was twenty dollars and twenty cents. So yeah, I really like Poshmark. There is some things to it that are different than eBay. Like it's really a social network type of site, so you really have to be active on the site pretty much every day. There are some really good YouTube videos about Poshmark that people have already made and what it's called is the 30 minute method so you want to look that up Poshmark 30 minute method and it'll tell you uh, what it is and basically it's just going through and spending about 30 minutes a day just doing a certain set of things on Poshmark and it works I can tell you it does work because I started doing it just a few days after I started listing and immediately I started getting sales and then I wouldn't do it for a few days and my sales would just completely drop off. I would see no activity. And then I would start doing it again and I would start to see activity again. So I haven't been real consistent with doing the 30 minute method. I do enjoy it. Um, I think it's worth it. So I'll just say that. And then I will wrap this video up and get it posted. And then I'll do an, the next one in the catch up series for the month of April here hopefully within the next few days and get that done and then I'll do May as well and get all caught up. All right guys, well thanks for watching my videos and thanks for all your love and support and all your sweet messages. Until next time, thanks for watching.